Welcome to Kansas Ag Report. I'm Ken Rogers. On this week's program, we talk grain markets with Dan O'Brien, ag economist located at the Northwest Kansas Extension Center in Colby. And a lot of factors pressuring the markets today. We want to find some answers as we work through this growing season. We also have features from Kansas Corn, Kansas Wheat, and the Kansas Farm Bureau, plus a weekly update from the Kansas Livestock Association and market information from Pinion, a division of Keiko Isom. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers, Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farm and ranch families since 1919, kfb.org, and the Kansas Wheat Commission, lending in the adoption of profitable innovations from wheat, online at kswheat.com. In Ag News, USDA plans to loosen existing CRP rules by allowing participants to request termination of their Conservation Reserve Program contracts if they're in the final year of the agreement. The change in the rules is meant to help open up more acres to wheat production to offset global food challenges caused by the war in Ukraine and allow qualifying farmers to terminate their contracts without having to pay back any rental payments. Stay with us, Dr. Dan O'Brien from K-State, and we return. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety? That future is here. The time is now. To meet end-user demands, the soybean checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the soybean checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Grass and grain, online or in the mail, keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. And joining us now is K-State Ag Economist, Dr. Dan O'Brien of the Northwest Research Center uh, out in Nicobe. Uh, good morning, uh, Dr. O'Brien. Good morning, Ken. All right, let's uh, get into it. I tell you, I get more questions and comments from folks that want to know what's going on with these markets, trying to make some sense of it. So uh, what, what to make, especially of these corn and soybeans, um, you know, they, they've just kind of been on their own trajectory. We'll talk more about the wheat in our next segment, but right now we do want to uh, focus in on uh, on the corn and, and the bean market. Well, we've been on trends the last three or four or five years of tightening up uh, world supplies relative to use. And uh, uh, for instance, you look at the world corn stocks use minus China, which is a good way to look at it because we're unsure about the Chinese ending stocks. Uh, but we had been, let's say 2017-18, had uh, stocks, ending stocks in the world projected about 14%. And we've been uh, steadily moving down to 12.7%. 12 12 so we already were uh, in a situation where we had strong usage, uh, inconsistent production, and tightening stocks. And then, of course, the uh, Ukraine-Russia situation 
just um, and with Ukraine's uh, uh, prominence as a ex exporter in the world, the third or fourth ranked uh, exporter, depending on how you looked at the numbers, uh, that that uh, that quote shook the market up. And uh, so so when you when you take Ukraine out of that equation uh, with the great uncertainty as to what they'll actually be able to bring to the table this year or make available, then uh, you get down closer to to historic lows and uh, uh, that that's when you get UN groups and food security uh, concerns uh, hopping all around wondering about where we're going so in the US it seemed like uh, yet again that uh, anticipation of uh, uh, shifting acres from corn to beans probably didn't happen like again we thought it would uh, a couple of months back well the fertilizer issue all winter uh, sure uh, through a uh, a haymaker at, at corn acres took, uh, I think we're projected to be down about 4 million from the previous year for corn acres in the US and a lot. It's not that the price is low, it's just a, a, the avail availability of fertilizer. So we shifted that over into the soybean side and in, in essence raised almost by that much soybean acres. I, I do think that, that uh, when we get into situations like this and countries start acting in a protective manner, that really, and, 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 and upsetting the flow of, of grain moving across, pardon me, across borders, across the world to where it's needed. That's, that's when we really start to see prices in a very inelastic manner jump. And I, I think that's what had been happening. Okay. Dr. Dan O'Brien, Ag Economist, Kansas State University. Let's take a break. We'll come back and talk about this wheat market in just a moment. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by the Kansas Livestock Association, supporting members' business interests and meeting consumer demands. KLA.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com. That's O H L D E seed.com. And Kansas Corn, building the future at kansascorn.com. And joining us, Dr. Dan O'Brien, the K-State Ag Economist and out in the Northwest uh, Research uh, Extension uh, Office of, in Colby. So uh, let's talk about this wheat. Uh, it has been uh, a, another just very uh, interesting ride. Uh, we just got off the wheat tour a couple of weeks ago. We kind of knew what was expecting. But uh, these prices, though, there's so many other factors into this price right now. Um, but if you're going to grow wheat, I think you're going to be okay this year. Well, we have high prices. We had gotten up. It's an interesting look at that July hard red contract on the 17th. We'd gotten up to as high as 13.79, uh, trading uh, um, at, at least earlier this week, trading trading down pretty sharply. And just depending when you look at the chart, some at least 40 cents down could could be more. We'll see how, how it all works out. So it's a market moving around on rumors. Uh, and and uh, and hopes or disappointments. And right now, the, there's there has been discussion of uh, of Turkey getting involved with brokering a deal for moving uh, grain out of Ukraine. Uh, and you know, if if that were to happen, that could make supplies um, more available to the world, et cetera. Uh, so I I I don't want to be a, a cynic and a pessimist, but boy, there's some heavy some high hurdles to have to jump over to, to get an appreciable amount of, of wheat out of Ukraine into world channels this year. So uh, 
world's pretty uh, pretty skittish to to say the least about where uh, where supplies are are gonna where where they're at how they're gonna get to where they need to be and, and what the what the prices will be to have to move to give us incentives to make all that happen. All right. Well, Dr. O'Brien, again, folks want to learn more about all the things that you're talking about. Agmanager.info is a good place to start. Yep. Yeah, we, we appreciate people uh, looking at that. Again, we put out weekly notes uh, on, the, on the grain markets, kind of a weekly summary, just so we know what we're talking about in, in, in terms of real numbers. Uh, and uh, th those generally are available each, each Friday. And uh, we appreciate anybody to come and take a look at. All right. Very good. Well, uh, as always, uh, appreciate uh, your insights. We'll talk with you uh, again. Thanks, Ken. We appreciate it. Dr. Dan O'Brien from K-State has joined us. We'll have more in just a moment. What if sustainability were synonymous with U.S. soy? If energy efficiency, water quality, and soil health help define U.S. soy's value, that future is here, the time is now. To meet end-user demands, the Soybean Checkoff is committing to sustainability that's achievable, worthwhile, and enduring. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Hi, this is Bill Johnston with Kansas Corn, and if you're watching this video, it's probably because you're doing the experiment with Kansas Corn about how light affects the growth of a plant. So I want to help you set this experiment up so that it works really well for you. First of all, we've provided some of these things, and we have these pots. We suggest that you put in about a cup and a half of potting soil which will fill it up right to the top then you're gonna lightly pack this potting soil till it's about at the level of this ring right here so we pack that the way we want it and then we're gonna put in three seeds these three seeds we're gonna put in about the depth of to our first knuckle so Take the seed, put it on top of the soil, push down until it's about the depth of your first knuckle. All three seeds, and then cover them up and pack them real lightly again. We're going to do the same thing in both pots. So once you have these seeds in place, they're going to need some water. So we recommend that you put in five tablespoons of water. Spread it evenly so that each seed gets water. And then one of these we need to put in a place where there's plenty of sunlight, like in maybe on a window seal. The other one, you're going to put in the dark somewhere maybe in a closet or possibly covered in a box like this. In a few days those seeds will sprout and we're going to see how light affects these plants. In research like this you have in this case two items. You have the control which is the plant that you're going to treat normal. You're going to provide it with everything you need. Like this one, it's going to go in the window so it gets the water and the sunlight it needs. This one is the experiment. See, it's going to test what you're curious about. So the experiment is going to be the one in the dark that is not getting the sunlight it needs. It's important in this experiment that you treat both plants the same. And one of those things you need to make sure is that they have adequate water. You know, the one in the sunlight is probably going to need water more often than the one in the dark. 
So here's what I want you to do. It's pretty simple. Just every couple days, check your plant just by touching the soil with your finger.